Hello, welcome to Young Minds Parents Lounge. I'm Jo, I'm Head of Parent Services. And I'm Emma, I'm the Helpline Manager. Thank you for joining us today. We're talking about exam stress. It's that time of year, we're coming up to exam season and we're hearing a, a definite increase in calls to our helpline around exam pressures. Emma, what are some of the things that we're hearing? What are some of the things that parents are struggling with at this time of year? Parents are often really worried about how do I help my child? You know, they see the early signs, they see mm. things like changes in behaviours and irritability, moodiness, lack of concentration, and they don't know what they can do on a practical level to alleviate the stress that their children are feeling, mm. particularly around exams. Mm. And we know it can be such a pressurised time. Mm. And what are some of the kind of difficulties young people experience when they are stressed around exam times? What's the toll that it can take on them? Well, on a, on a sort of first basis I would say children young people often get really physical symptoms mm. when they're stressed they can get tummy aches they can feel sick they can be on the toilet they can feel it's sort of like they've got sweaty palms hearts beating so there's all sorts of physical symptoms but often their behavior and their communication can change mm. and that often means that there's rows and miscommunication and conflicts at home between siblings parents and even teachers and mates mm. in school as well We'll talk about the do's and the don'ts. Let's start off with the don'ts though. What should parents kind of like not do in terms of approaching this? Policing is something that's really important to avoid. Mm. Be a source of support, but recognise that what you need to do is enable mm. rather than actually sort of watch and monitor and police. Mm. How much pressure should young people feel about what's going on around them, what other people are doing, what their friends and peers are apparently doing? Yeah. Children, young people often are told by their friends at school, oh God, well, haven't you done this? Haven't you done that? I've spent seven hours revising today. The key is just let go of all of that. Mm. They don't take it on board. Mm. Don't try and be competitive and don't try and match your revision or your attainment to anybody else's. Mm. You've just got to take things individually at your own pace. Brilliant, thank you. And what are some of our kind of top tips then for how parents can get the best out of this? I think the key here is about keeping perspective. You know, when you're a teenager, you're going through exams, it can feel as though the exams literally mean everything mm. and that the risk of failure can be monumental. It's very common for teenagers to catastrophize mm. and to believe that an exam is an indicator of intelligence mm. um, and that they won't be valued as a person if they don't do very well. Keeping perspective and just remembering, actually, all it is is a test of recall. It's a memory test. Mm. It doesn't mean anything beyond that. Um, it's really, really important. Secondly, I would always say plan ahead. Think about what style of revision, what kind of timetable, how do you break up your time? These are important techniques. And our recommendation is you study for 30 to 40 minutes and you take a 15 minute break. And we know that that actually enables children and young people to retain information more effectively. And should parents be kind of really involved in that? Should they really know what their young people are doing? Should they kind of really push to kind of be involved or should they leave it? I think it's about having the early preventative conversations mm. that enable the young person to have an awareness about the kind of framework and the approach that they can take, setting aside one-on-one -on -one time so that you're there to kind of pick up any emotional fallout mm. if they're feeling stressed, if they're feeling worried, they know that they can turn to you. Mm. But what you're not doing is policing them day mm. to day. So you're not saying, hang on a minute, you didn't just do a 40 minute session, why are you having a break? You've only done 10 mm. minutes. Mm. There's a real balance that mm. has to be made. And we're talking about you know, trying to take stress out of the equation. So what are some of the things parents can do to reduce stress? One of the things is about setting realistic goals and, and not, not trying to encourage children and young people just to get the absolute, absolute, absolute highest level of attainment in every single subject and I think also reducing stress is about self-care mm. it's about eating well taking breaks sleeping well and making time for yourself and most importantly let's actually remember to have fun mm. you know just having time out and having time to focus on activities that your child really enjoys is really important and also reward getting through the end of exams mm. so I think mm. plan something together or do something to celebrate after the last exam finishes mm. and make that your focal point as opposed to the results day. And, and what, how much more can parents do to kind of reassure their children that it isn't the end of the world if things don't quite go to plan? I would actually say that there's no such thing as overdoing that. I think as parents, we know that we, the love that we have for our child mm. is unconditional. 
but nothing changes that. But your child doesn't know that, and they will place so much pressure on themselves. It's really important just to go back to basics and regularly say, mm. I'm so proud of you, darling, I love you. Mm. Nothing in the world is going to change that. Whatever happens on that results day, I'm with you 100%. Mm. Mm. Fantastic. And if uh, young people are struggling, should parents talk to schools? What should they do? How should they approach things now if they know their child yeah, is? Yeah, I think the important thing is encouraging your child to feel okay to have the conversation. Mm. It's about feeling comfortable and okay to say, Mum, Dad, I'm really struggling. I think I need mm. some help here. Children need to have a sense of autonomy. So mm. there's a balance between enabling them to say, hey, hands up, I'm really Ownership. struggling. Ownership, exactly. Mm. And this is how I want to approach accessing help. Brilliant, thank you. Any more tips that you want to kind of wrap up with? I would simply say in results day, plan with your child how you want to approach that. Let them decide sort of whether, you, whether you're going to be with them the moment that they get mm. their results um, and think about how they're going to feel that day and let them have some ownership and control. Brilliant, thanks so much. Brilliant, thank you for joining us. Goodbye.